So this is a fundamental theorem of linear algebra. Okay, so R of A is the column space of A. And it has a dimension equal to R. So again, A is in M by N. The null space of A, and it has a dimension equal to n minus r. The column space of A transpose, also known as the row space of A, um, and it has a dimension r. Then the fourth subspace is the null space of A transpose, the left null space of A, and it has dimension M minus R. And the fifth point is that, is these two points I already mentioned above, let me put it this way, is the orthogonal complement of R of A transpose in R to the N and R of A is the orthogonal complement of N of A transpose in R to the N. Okay. So this is called the fundamental theorem of linear algebra. Okay, so now the next thing I want to discuss is about the rank. Sir, can you, uh, can you please summarize what each statement of this fundamental theorem means? Just a glance. Yeah, see the, uh, the first four statements are more definition. Okay, R of A is uh, defined to be the column space of A. And think of this dimension of the column space of A equal to R as basically a statement that is saying that um, uh, that uh, there are R linearly independent vectors in the columns of A. And the null space of A are the set of vectors that map to zero and its dimension is N minus R. Okay, and that happens because the null space of A is the orthogon orthogonal complement of R of A transpose. So these two together should always add up to the dimension of R to the N, which is the total dimension of the space of which these two are orthogonal complement subspaces. And the row space R of A transpose is essentially the range space of the transpose of A, which means you've exchanged the rows and columns. And uh, the point is that the R of A transpose and R of A always have the same dimension. I'll put this in red. So this is another very important point, which is something that I said we'll come, we'll actually show this later on. But this is another point which is uh, in no way intuitively obvious to me. But regardless of which matrix you pick, the uh, row space and the column space have the same dimension or the row rank and the column rank are always equal. And uh, what, um, what the next statement is saying is that N of A transpose is the left null space. So it's the null space defined on A transpose. And again, because R of A is the orthogonal complement of N of A transpose, the dimension of the left null space and the dimension of R of A must add up to M. And so if the dimension of R of A was R, the dimension of N of A transpose must always be M minus R. And these two are basically, uh, again, coming from the definitions of uh, how you define N of A. It is a set of all vectors that are orthogonal to the rows of A and therefore um, it, is, um, it is the orthogonal complement of R of A transpose and R of A is the orthogonal complement of N of A transpose. Okay. Sir, may I, uh, sir, can you take a simple example of a 2 by 3 matrix like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and maybe just, just Tell what uh, they all represent. Like, take one, two, three, four, five. 
see if you I mean that's actually not a good example too many numerical examples but since you requested I quickly look at this particular example okay. um, so you can see that um, uh, the the columns of this matrix there are two columns that are linearly independent and uh, of course since they are in two dimensions the third column will linear, will be linearly dependent on these two columns so this is a two cross three matrix so the r of a um, it's the column space of a and in this case it's actually equal to r squared because the, these two columns together uh, can already span the entire r squared and so the null space of a which is a set of all vectors that map to zero it has dimension n minus r which is 3 minus 2 which is 1 and uh, you can see that uh, if I take the vector um, so you, you have to actually work it out but um, okay sir I, I got it I, I think I got it. yeah it has uh, has dimension one. So there is a there is you can find a basis. Okay. Sir, we're doing a couple of these pro problems in the problem session yeah. tomorrow, so they will be more obvious tomorrow. You can I think yeah. you can continue with yeah. the class right now. Yeah. So similarly, yeah, just for the sake of completeness, R of A transpose. Okay. okay now this is. If I take A transpose, it's these vectors, 1, 3, 5, the span of these vectors, 2, 4, and 6. And these are linearly independent vectors. So it has dimension 2. And uh, these, these two vectors are a basis. Okay, so you can just directly take these two vectors as the basis for R of A transpose. And N of A transpose, has dimension zero. So if I if I want to find a vector which when multiplied by these two vectors, so that is if I do alpha times one three five plus beta times two four six and I set that equal to zero, this is only possible if alpha equals beta equals zero. Okay. Yes sir fine. I got it. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about, there's not much time left, but at least I can put down the definition. So rank. So the rank of the matrix, we already defined that it is the, the dimension of the range space of the matrix. And it's equal to the number of linearly independent columns in A. And uh, the remarkable fact that I mentioned earlier is that rank of A equals the rank of A transpose. This is what we often refer to as row rank equals the column rank. Um, so related to the rank uh, is the property that if you take the system of linear equations AX equals B, then it can have uh, either one solution or no solution or infinitely many solutions. These are the only three possibilities. So it can never have two solutions, for example. Um, and uh, it has at least one solution if rank of the augmented matrix equals the rank of A. So basically when this happens, it means that B is in the column space of A because adding B is not changing the rank of A. And so um, 
And so this is uh, at least one solution and it has no solution if rank of a b is greater than rank of a okay um How do we find the rank of A? It is through these things called elementary row operations. So I won't go through these in detail. Again, I'm assuming that you've seen, um, uh, you've seen how to compute the rank of a matrix in your undergraduate program. And uh, so you know how to do these, um, but maybe in the homeworks, I will uh, give you an example, a couple of matrices, so where you can go over the motions of computing the rank by doing the uh, row reduction and uh, uh, just uh, refresh your memory on how it is done. But these elementary row operations have the property that they preserve the rank. They don't change the rank. Um, so that's the reason why the combo of the rank. Then uh, that tells you what the rank of the matrix is, uh, rank of the original matrix is, because none of the operations you did on the matrix changed its rank. Uh, so what are these elementary row operations? You can exchange rows. You can scale a row. By a non-zero scalar. If you multiply a row by zero, you may change the rank. So you're not allowed to multiply by zero, but you're allowed to multiply by any non-zero scalar. Addition of a scalar multiple, a scalar multiple of a row to another row. Three elementary row operations, which will result in what is known as RF or the row reduced echelon form. Sir? Yeah? Yeah, so in the first statement, rank of AB equals to rank of A, it means like even though you're adding one more vector uh, to the A, making yes. it AB. So mm -hmm. your uh, dimension is not getting changed ultimately. So it means uh, that vector, whatever B you have added, it's uh, independent of either of the vectors in the A. Is it mean that, sir? Uh, say that again. So uh, when you're making AB augmented matrix, you are adding the column column matrix of B, like you are adding the vector B to the vector A, like you are yes. it. So yes. that means when it is equal to rank of A, it means the dimension is not getting changed. So the dimension of the column space is not changing. Yes. Yeah. So uh, that means uh, the vector B is independent of like it's a dependent on the one of the vectors of A. Yeah, it's not linear. It is not linearly independent of the columns of A. If B was linearly independent of the columns of A, then appending B will definitely increase the rank by one. And so that is the no solution case. So that is you're adding one more extra dimension after adding B, so the second point. Yes, yes. Okay. So okay. that means that because the rank increased, okay, it means that the point B cannot be reached by just taking linear combinations of columns of A. And that's yes, the reason sir, why AX equals B will never have a solution. Right, sir. Right, sir. Okay, sir. So this row reduced echelon form, it reveals the rank. It is equal to the number of non-zero rows in the row reduced echelon form. Okay, so we're out of time. Uh, in the next class, we will discuss further about um, this uh, rank and uh, related properties. And uh, so that concludes what I wanted to say today. Um, are there any other questions? Sir. Yeah. Sir, I you wanted know, to know in any, like you said, matrix is a linear transform. So in any linear transform, we are only interested in the range of the transform, which is here the column space of A. So what additional information does the left null space of A gives that we are interested in finding it or solving it? So it's a good question. So the point is that, uh, yeah, so 
of the four subspaces okay the the null space of a matrix is the orthogonal complement of um the uh, the row space of the matrix and the column space of the matrix is the orthogonal complement of the left null space of the matrix so in some sense if you know what n of a is you completely know what r of a transpose is and so no knowing uh, n of a there is no real additional information you are getting about uh, r of, uh, by knowing r of a transpose you know that they are the orthogonal complements of each other but basically making these connections is the core of uh, how you 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 look at mathematics is uh, you try to ask uh, what are the relationships between these the so the way to think about it is that you start with a matrix and you can define these four subspaces and you ask are they related in some way and you find that these are the relationships between them and uh, and then you realize that if uh, if i know the the null space of a matrix then i already know uh, exactly what the row space of the matrix is because it's just the orthogonal complement so yeah uh, it's a long winded answer to your question but um, it's just a connection between these subspaces